the last four years, hard when we've worked these, we've seen a massive growth. Hey everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome to another live show here with Lee Godbold, that's me, with Junk Removal Authority, where we help junk removal business owners make more money and live a better life. All right, welcome to winter in junk removal. At least that's what it feels like here recently. A lot of people talking about being a little bit on the slow side. Uh, slow season seems to have rise about, arrived about a month earlier this year. But that's cool because there's a lot of guys out there doing the exact things they need to do, which is getting those yard signs out, doing those waves, those traffic waves with the sign, just sitting there waving like an idiot on the side of the road, holding your sign up with your truck in the background and just making some money as people go by and they see your brand and they decide, hey, I'm going to do work with this company, Wingman Junk Removal, Mean Green Junk Removal, Junk Doctors, uh, Ace Junk Removal Pros, whatever. You know, they're like, all right, we see these trucks out there. We're going to go out. We're going to do work. Uh, we're going to hire these guys because they saw them on the side of the road. When you get slow, don't sit around at the house and sulk and complain and, and relax. When you get slow, get out there, get sticky notes out, yard signs. Your entire area should be just blanketed with yard signs for your particular company. We've got a campaign. We just got 500 yard signs on the way for junk doctors. We're going to put them out everywhere. Uh, we we want to get calls from code enforcement officers and people complaining about seeing yard signs every single place that they go because now that means we're getting the word out. And when complaints are coming in from code enforcement officers, uh, that means it's being seen, which is a good thing. Uh, I've never seen an actual fine get put out for a yard sign also, especially this time of year with uh, po political signs. You know, you get elections going on, you get those yard signs out, people tend to leave them alone during uh, this, you know, these election cycles because they normally don't take up, not supposed to take up election signs. So your business signs, if you put them kind of in the grouping of that same area will work out well. So get those signs out. When your digital stuff isn't bringing as much because things have gotten slower, you've got to make it up in any way possible. And that's by getting busy, by doing the proven stuff like yard signs, which really, really, really work. Let's talk a little bit about that. I know today also we're going over some Google ad stuff. That's the main thing on these Thursday webinars. And you know, here at Junk Removal Authority, we manage tons of campaigns for junk removal companies all throughout the country, digital marketing from amazing websites. Guys, if you haven't checked out a recent website, we need to get a couple of recent sites, Lightning Hall, a few others, odds and ends, uh, posted on a link. Some of the sites we're turning out now are absolutely amazing. So we've, uh, we've got a really strong web team. Everybody's like, hey, we love our website. So uh, great websites manage Google ads campaigns. You know, we're shooting for a really good cost per conversion. We want to figure out how aggressive do you want to be? Are you somebody that wants to be really aggressive, show as much as possible, miss out on as little as possible? Or are you somebody that wants to try and increase profitability, wants to try and just show for the most qualified customers? All that is kind of stuff that we look into. We manage campaigns. And that's what we're going to be talking about today as well. And then obviously search engine optimization, getting your site to rank well organically is huge. The best long-term investment you're ever going to make is SEO. It can take a while, like six months, a year, two years before you're really showing really, really good and getting a lot of stuff coming in. But once it happens, you're not having to pay for those clicks. You can head over to junkarray.com if you're interested in any of that. Okay. Uh, one of the things that we wanted to cover today, obviously we're going to be talking about Google ads uh, related stuff. So let's jump into Google Ads related stuff. If you guys have any questions, make sure you post them in the comment section. It can be about anything Google Ads related or not. I want to cover a particular topic today on Google Ads and that's search impression share. So search impression share is something that, there's, there's a couple. You've got search impression share. You've got top impression share. And you've got absolute top. So this is a statistic that we get people all the time asking, hey, can you provide this information over? And it's a relevant data point because what it is, is basically percentage of time you showed For relevant searches in your market. So wherever you target. 
So out of all the keywords and all the areas that you target, it's the percentage of time that your ad actually showed. And then we have percentage of time you showed up top. That's top impression share. Now that is of all total searches. So if you have 100 searches and you showed up top, you showed 70% of the time, you'd have a 70% impression share. If you had 100, so those same 100 searches, if you showed up top 40% of the time, you'd have a 40% top impression share. An absolute top is percentage of time you show in the most prominent ads position. Uh, pos position. So let's talk about most prominent. That does not necessarily mean you are the very first listing on the page. What that means is out of all the Google ads related, non-local service ad related keywords or ads that are shown, you were the most important position, the most prominent the highest up of all of the Google ads that actually show, but it doesn't necessarily guarantee that you are number one on the page because LSA ads or something like that could have popped in there. So again, that's of the same bank of 100. So some people tend to think the top impression share is the percentage of time you show up top out of the times you showed. It's not, it's out of all the same eligible searches just like with search impression share. What happens, when you first launch a campaign, the most common bid strategies to use when you first launch a campaign is either manual CPC or max clicks. Now, I tend to like the launch with manual CPC and, and, I, and we actually do enhanced. So by doing enhanced, you are giving Google a little bit of leeway to raise and lower bids, depending on how likely the person is to convert. Um, it's whereas manual CPC, that's pretty much got a hard stop on your max bid. Max clicks, I'm not a huge fan of max clicks. Generally, it's very common for ads companies to start with max clicks. It can work. A lot of times it'll bring less qualified traffic to your page you have a lower cost per click, but the traffic is less qualified. What I like about manual CPC is we can set some max bids in there and hopefully we show well for the people that uh, are more qualified. And this is especially effective if you have a little bit of a higher budget. If you've got a small budget, max clicks might be the way you want to go because just a couple clicks, even if it's qualified people, if they don't convert, can run your budget up. So typical manual CPC enhanced, a lot of areas of the country, it's like $8 on the low side to 17 or so on the high side on CPCs. With max clicks, you might, you might see that, you're probably gonna see this much lower because what Google's trying to do is get you, get you as many clicks as possible. It doesn't really care how qualified the, the actual traffic is. So you're gonna start with generally manual CPC. Let's say we start with manual CPC and uh, you look and you see that your search impression share is 40%. Your initial knee-jerk reaction is that, hey, these ads aren't working because I'm only showing 40% of the time and that's not enough. And then especially if you jump over here to top impression share and all of a sudden you see that you're only showing 20% of the time or if you jump over here to absolute top and it tells you you are less than 10% of the time at the very absolute top. So you look at these numbers and you say, wow, this does not look good. Some people think they wanna be up top all the time. That's what you hear a lot of times is people say, hey, I wanna be number one because they equate the number one position to the best run Google ads. What I wanna remind everybody is Google is an auction. It's not 100% the highest bidder wins, but that's a large factor in your results. So you go in and you tell Google, I'm willing to pay up to this amount for every click, or I'm willing to pay up to this amount for every conversion if you're using a target CPA big strategy. And it 
rakes your ad copy and different part, your, your ad relevance and your landing page experience. So there is an algorithm that takes into effect like the quality of your web page and the quality of your ad copy and the click through rate that's being received. And it associates a quality score. And then it also looks at how much you're willing to bid. And they've got an algorithm that decides, they factor those two things in. They look at your results and your competitor results and your bids and your competitor's bids and the algorithm kicks in and it's gonna show you in whatever position based upon those numbers, kind of loosely. So what happens is for you to be the absolute top position, that means you are oftentimes saying, I wanna pay more money. So what happens is you wind up paying a lot more cost per click than the person in second and the person in third. And we know, especially nowadays, when people are watching what they're spending a little bit more, people are gonna call around generally. They're gonna to talk to two or three companies. So you might find you get more clicks at Absolute Top if your budget's high enough, but it's gonna cost you more per click and you might actually get less conversions than guys in second and third because people are gonna call around, they call three companies, they're gonna realize most junk removal companies are priced about the same. And if the, uh, those three companies actually answer the phone and if they're decent on the phone, you know, they're gonna say, I might as well just book with the company I'm speaking with right now because I've heard similar information from the guy in first and the guy in second. So we like to aim for that second or third kind of spot. Um, that doesn't mean we always are gonna show second or third. Like a lot of times we are number one, especially when you go over to the target CPA bid strategy and you're allowing Google to be taking in information on how likely somebody is to convert. And if they see somebody's really likely to convert, they're gonna bump your bid up that cost per click out for that particular click and they're gonna show you a lot higher. So absolute top, um, we look at it because that tells us how competitive we are, but it's not all that important. Top impression share is, is pretty important and search impression share is, is obviously also pretty important. But with these pieces, this three pieces of information right now, we don't have the entire picture. The other pieces we need is search loss to budget. and rank, so search loss to rank. Once we have these two data points, and also there's a search top impression share lost to budget and rank, as well as absolute top lost to budget and rank. Now we're able to get in there and really figure out why are we not ranking uh, why is our impression share not as good? So if you get in there and you see that it's lost due to budget, a lot of times what you have to do is just raise up your, uh, your, your daily budget if you wanna show better. Now, alternatively, you can get in there and you can see is you know maybe we're overbidding for some cost per click so we can try and lower our cost per clicks or lower our target CPA and that'll allow it to show more and hopefully it'll help raise up that impression share. But at some point you're gonna to get to a point where you're gonna start constricting the ads from showing and your impression share is gonna go down. And what's gonna happen is instead of seeing search loss due to budget, you're gonna see search loss due to rank. And that's telling you that you've gotten too cheap on your target CPA and your bids if you're at manual CPC. So our goal is to get a cost per conversion that is acceptable. And then we wanna spend as much as, as we possibly can. And once you do that, this search loss to budget number should start decreasing. But let's say you get to the point that you're, um, you're no longer seeing search loss due to budget. It's all kind of loss due to rank. One of the things that people like to want to do once they achieve that is they want to try and start increasing overall impression share by raising bids. That's the quickest way to increase search loss due to rank is raise bids. There are other ways. That's the quickest way to make an impact. So what can happen is you, um, as you start raising those bids up, you might find you start spending a lot more. Your cost per conversion goes up, but your actual conversions go down. 
And this is very typical once you've gotten to my favorite bid strategy in most markets, which is target CPA. So max conversions target CPA. Once you've gotten to it, then what it's doing is it's trying, again, it's trying to measure who's most likely to convert. And it's going to adjust the bids as such. So what's your own target CPA? Once you switch to target CPA, let's say you've been using manual. When you do the switch to target CPA, what's very common, um, you might see lower impressions, lower impression share. but higher conversions. Instead of using the word higher, let's use the word more. More conversions at a potentially a lower or sa the same cost per conversion. So this confuses a lot of people. If, they, if you've been running a campaign on manual CPC and all of a sudden you switch it over to target CPA, and uh, if you're somebody that's really, really, really watching search impression share, all of a sudden you might see your impression share actually go down and that concerns you. And we've seen some people that do like knee jerk reactions and they turn off target CPA. They're not looking at the entire picture. So what you would see is the impression share went down, but all of a sudden now we're seeing more conversions at a lower cost per conversion. and Overall, that's what we want. We want phone calls. The reason for that is, is again, Google isn't showing it to people that are less likely to convert and that's hurting your impression share. And it's spending more on the people that are more likely to convert to show you more prominently because they know that there's a higher probability they're gonna call, book online, submit a contact form, whichever way that you have to um, get in touch with. If you guys got any questions, feel free to kind of post them in here. Um, post them in the chat. One thing I want to talk about a little bit also, we started out this conversation talking about yard signs talking and the different types of old fashioned marketing to do or even just marketing in general. So in terms of old fashioned marketing, the stuff that's great to do, obviously yard signs, sticky notes, uh, networking with realtors, professional organizers, uh, rotary clubs, chamber of commerces, like you, the list kind of can go on and on. And what'll happen oftentimes is people, you'll try and do it all, but unless you have a wife helping you or a salesperson helping you or a, some truck teams that, you, that you're really employing and you're paying to kind of put out yard signs or whatever, what happens is you wind up not doing a very good job at any of it. Yard signs are very, very effective. We had recently had a company that launched, and they got a pretty healthy Google Ads budget. They're getting okay results from Google Ads. You know, Google Ads can take, uh, you know, they're getting okay, it's been, they've been open about a month. They're getting good, consistent lead flow from Google Ads. At a cost per conversion, that's okay. It's a little on the high side, but it's bringing them good business. However, they're getting more work from yard signs, and they're spending like $150 a day. Now, that doesn't mean you stop Google Ads to do yard signs because you're going to give up all the great qualified traffic that's coming in from your Google Ads platform. And I would expect that as the Google Ads gain steam, it will start to beat out the yard signs but they ordered like a thousand yard signs when they started. Now they came in and they bought uh, a couple trucks, two, three trucks right at, the, right at the start. They hired several people and they stick out these yard signs and it's just bringing them in a ton and a ton of work. That's what they're focusing on. They're not doing networking with realtors. They're not doing radio advertisements or uh, the, the sticky notes to doing after jobs. They're not, you know, they're not calling up professional organizers right now. Now they've probably got the bandwidth to start adding that stuff in soon, but what they've decided to focus on is everybody blanket the area in yard signs. It's amazing how effective it is. People have to see that stuff a lot. Like if they see you repetitively for a month, two months, three months, whatever, they start to remember whatever company it is that you put out, junk doctors or whatever, and that's when they're likely to convert. You can't just put out a couple yard signs here and there and expect to get much from it. And what we see a lot of people do is you'll put out a handful and then you'll go, you know, over a weekend and you won't get a single call or if the calls you get are no good and then you give up on it. And that's the worst possible thing you can kind of do in advertising as a general rule is pull the plug too soon before you've actually been able to determine is there something here or not. 
So make sure you're getting those, getting those out there. But uh, we're gonna wrap here in the next few minutes unless we get a couple questions in. Uh, the main thing that I wanted to cover today, I wanted to talk about the search impression share. It is a statistic that is important, but people, a lot of times they put a little bit too much weight into it. You've got to look at all the other statistics and the KPIs with the campaign to truly understand what search impression share means. Because if it's up or down or whatever, that doesn't necessarily mean your campaign is improving or getting worse. You gotta be able to look at the entire picture. There's like seven or eight statistics that you gotta pay attention to on Google Ads. And once you get in a groove on looking at them, uh, the picture becomes pretty clear. And then you try something. And you give it a little bit of time. If it looks like it works, you continue down that direction. If it looks like it reversed, you still might continue down that direction for another another week or two to see if uh, if that was just random or if that's a trend. And then at some point after, uh, if it starts going the wrong way for a good period of time, then you go the other way. And then that's kind of what you hit. And that's sort of what you're constantly doing because as new competitors come in the market and people raise bids or lower bids or raise CPA or lower target CPA, you want to be able to respond to that to make sure that you're not underbidding and not getting any traffic and you're not overbidding and paying more than you actually have to. So you watch those numbers uh, on a, depending on what your budget is, you know, you know, once a week, once a campaign is established is okay. Uh, a couple times a week would be best. You also need to be going through your search terms. The more you go through your search terms, the higher quality the campaign gets the higher click-through rate you have because you're not showing for as many bad things. And the higher click-through rate you have, that actually can, can affect the quality score and how much you actually have to pay for a particular ad position. So if you can get out in there and you can increase your click-through rate, and this is only done over time by changing ad copy going through, and going through search terms or the kind of the, the best way of increasing that. And also bids. If you raise bids up, you're showing more prominently, generally your click-through rate's gonna go up. Which uh, oftentimes, also, if you ever go into and you see on search impression share that you're missing out or on your quality score, that your quality score is low because of expected CTR. So expected click-through rate. Well, one of the largest measures of expected click-through rate is your actual click-through rate. So they look at the kind of the history of your campaign and the click-through rate you've had, and they're gonna say because of what you've done in the past, your expected CTR is low or it's high. One of the things you can actually do is you can raise bids up, especially when you first launch, get a higher click-through rate, and then begin working bids down. And because Google's seeing that you have the possibility of actually showing well or getting lots of clicks, a higher click-through rate, it'll raise that expected CTR, it'll raise your quality score, and then now all of a sudden you're being able to show in the same position for less money. And that's a that's a win-win-win all the way around. All right, guys, appreciate everybody for tuning in for uh, Thursday, 12 noons webinar, Google Ad Focus. We talked about search impression share. Uh, we'll cover another topic next week. Doesn't look like we have any questions, so we appreciate all of you guys watching. Hope you found it valuable. Head on over to junkra.com if you're interested in digital marketing services, or if you're looking to get in business, we've got our business package service, or the franchise alternative that's available. We've had uh, a kind of a slew of people go through that here in the last few months. We'd love to have you. We've got another class coming in next month. So far, I think we've got two people in that one. We can take on up to two more. So uh, make sure you uh, get on over to junkarray.com, get signed up for that. Uh, All Booked Up Media, if you guys need some assistance on answering phone calls. We had Rodney on a webinar yesterday. Highly recommend you look at the phone call web webinar yesterday. We went over uh, ways to as those phone calls come in, to book more jobs, to handle objections, to get on site and actually be able to quote the job on site. And once you get in front of somebody, the probability goes up you're gonna book. So highly recommend you check out that webinar. And then Workies, our, our, our good friends over at Workies, the best provider of a junk removal CRM, make sure you click on the link in the description to head on over to Workies and get signed up. Appreciate all you guys watching. We'll see you here real soon. Again, I'm Lee Gobble with Junk Removal Authority, where we help junk removal business owners make more money and live a better life. See you next time.
the last four years, hardly working, we've seen a massive growth.